so welcome to week 11 then we've only got three weeks to go and it's festival of british racing day today at ascot with a supporting card from longchamp and also from doncaster so let's get straight into the action for today then the opening race is the kipco british long distance cup it's a two mile event and we've got a really small field for this there's only six of them but we've got a pretty good field nonetheless wait your turn for joshua sutherland is the top rated by 150 for steve ran we'll be hoping to give that one plenty to think about the becoming disappointing cricket head for paul Rhodes, but finders keepers for serious chill was a good winner last time out and could spring a bit of a surprise in that one the second race is the kipco british champion sprint stakes much bigger field this time paul Rhodes has got the top one here airwolf although the better form does appear to be with new tricks for Django or awesome music for john for, uh, for john music awesome music for john morgan so that one looks to be a wide open race dead red demon for josh Russell. the third race is the kipco champion phillies and mares stakes it's a mile and a half race and it's a battle of the generations because the top rated is paul Rhodes' three-year-old treaty of versailles but john morgan has got the four-year-old trev who will be hoping to, hoping to lower that one's colors paul Rhodes' horse of course will be in receipt of the wait for age Throw into the mix, lost at sea for Steve Rand, another three-year-old, and editorial, another one for Paul Rhodes in there as well. Paul paid for Django, and the four-year-old sign polar for Derek Hinton also don't look out of it either. And don't forget 101 Badabing for Molly at Surfers, one that likes to pop up on a live outsider. Could just be Cookie Geronimo for Darren Howes, whose stable's running into a bit of form in recent weeks. The Kipco Queen Elizabeth II stakes is next. This is a big one-mile group one event. And again, a bit of a battle of the generations, but it looks like the three-year-olds will be holding court this time. Stephen Rand's Child's Play is the top rated, but it's a pretty inexperienced horse, so we'll have to uh, pull out all the stops to win this. Down under for Django, was going for a four-timer last time out and got beat, but he'll be trying to turn that one around. Overflow for Hans Jones is lobbing to go off lickety split from the front and turn it into a interesting sort of race the fifth race is the kipco champion stakes this one's a mile and a quarter of course and once again it's the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds doing battle the three-year-olds at the top favorite son for django and grand gesture for stephen ran but young guy zilladay for darren thompson and miss millennium for molly at surfer probably won't be too far away lady jane felsham needs to bounce back to form made to be broken for joshua sutherland is another one just hovering under the radar and watch out for wu chang gratulator for vinnie gerard who also isn't out of it. Race six is the Kipco Future Stars handicap, first handicap of the week, and the top rated here is for Django. No excuses. This seven furlong event has attracted a huge field, and the one with the in most interest in looking form looks to be Darren Thompson's Kinky Boots or Hans Jones's Black Samurai. Well, if you go down towards the bottom of the card, once again, Darren Howes has got one in there of a decent weight, King Town Quick, and Stu Gray's Dirty Lego shouldn't be too far behind either and then go on to race seven which is the bmw cornwall stakes this is a five furlong two-year-old sprint and paul Rhodes has got the top one here humongous but coolidge shouldn't be too far behind that one for john morgan he's a fan of rita coolidge and that's where that one's got the name from zoom to the moon for joshua sutherland is also in there this one looks a bit of a wide open race to me race number eight is the grosvenor lodge stakes the grosvenor casino lodge stakes to be fair and it's a one mile four for the long group three event and again some pretty hot looking horses at the top of this with the top the top bunch of them all having won plenty of times in recent weeks, Jane Austen for David Robertson is one that could be just bobbling under the surface. They couldn't get into it one well last time out. But Paul Rhodes will be hoping that Treaty of Melbourne can take this one for the three-year-olds. Race number nine is the first of the two races at Longchamp in Paris. And it's the Qatar pre showed no stakes. One mile, six and a half furlongs. Both of the races at Longchamp are one mile, six and a half furlongs, interestingly. And Slokes the Cat, the St. Ledger winner, is the top one here. And should be difficult to beat. Although smiley face Picasso... The star of David and Morazan Zegai are also pretty highly rated, and so too is I did it my way for Molly at Surfer. Red Rag for David Robertson and Thunder Moon for Darren Thompson. Not out of it, and even the lowest rated one, El Rond, who's only rated 96, wouldn't be too much of a surprise to see that one win there. The handicap at Longchamp is a horse race in a broad handicap over the same trip, and Proud Morazan is the top rated one here. From Smoke on the Water, who's been first, third, and second in three of his last four races. Starters orders for Derek Hinton's always thereabouts, and quite a few of these seem to be racing against each other each week, so it could be a whose turn is it to win this week event.
We then go back to Doncaster to end the day. Two races there, the Download Racing Post. Handicap is the first one of them. Over a mile and a half, Jungle Queen for Joshua Sutherland's the top rated one there. Kempton for Carla Agante looks good though. So too does Northern Lights for Sirius Chill. The day will end with the bet through the Racing Post stakes. It's a five furlong sprint listed for three-year-olds and upwards and Paul Rhodes' Exocet Missile is still the top rated despite the fact it doesn't seem to want to put its head in front. Whitewater for Django is rated just £3 inferior. The good wife for Molly at Surf is also in there as well. It's a very small field for this, which is quite surprising. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Joshua Sutherland take this with Black Dead Redemption. So that's your day one of week 11. So we're just three weeks to go. Then let's take a look at the standings, see where everybody's doing this. We get down towards the business end of the season. And John Morgan looks like he's got the flat championship wrapped up already, doesn't he? 45 wins, he's 12 clear of Steve Rand. And neither of those two have huge amounts of runners they're pretty selective in where they place their horses so i can't really see steve picking up 12 wins over three weeks so he might as well give him the trophy now really django might challenge steve for second he's just one behind him on 32 joshua sutherland in fourth place on 27 he looks a good bet for the dual code championship though doesn't he he's doing well in the jumps leading over on that format Paul Rhodes, 26 winners, will probably think it's a disappointing season, but he's had a few big wins, and he's, as ever, always in there with a the mix, and so I'm sure he'll be hoping he can break through the 30 or 40 barrier before the end of the season. Jim Murray hastily departed the other week, but still in sixth with 18 wins. Should be overtaken by Darren Thompson this week, and Molly at Surf as well, I would think. I also expect Hans Jones and Vinnie Gerrard to overtake him in the next week or two. Thunder Sparks down in 11th. He seems to have disappeared again. I'm sure he might be back before the end of the season. And then the last one of the top 12 is David Robertson, who's got 13, which is unlucky for some, unlucky for others. So that's your week one and day one then. We'll get over to Ascot now for the Festival of British Racing with Doug.